In the realm of music history, there exists a figure whose voice and stage presence have left an unforgettable impression on millions. Whether it's reminiscing about the first time, hearing the tunes, or sharing personal anecdotes about how the music influenced lives, there's something magnetic about those memories. As we delve deeper into the stories surrounding this classic star, we invite you to share your fondest recollections or experiences related to the legendary artist. Your tales might evoke laughter, surprise, or even a touch of sadness, but they're all welcome here. Stay tuned as we uncover intriguing tidbits about this celebrated figure. Keep watching to learn more, and don't forget to share your memories in the comments below. We're eager to hear them. In a small town in Mississippi, a boy was born on January 8, 1935. He grew up in a humble home with his parents. Music surrounded him from a young age, with gospel tunes at church and blues rhythms on the streets shaping his love for melodies. Moving to Memphis in 1948, he attended high school where he began to explore his musical talents. Influenced by blues, country, and rhythm and blues, he started creating his own sound. Then, in 1954, something extraordinary happened. He stepped into a recording studio to make a song for his mom, and his raw talent caught the attention of the studio owner. With the help of fellow musicians, they crafted a unique sound that would soon captivate the world. 1956 was a pivotal year. With the release of his hit song Heartbreak Hotel and his debut album, he became a sensation. His electrifying performances, often controversial, made him both loved and criticized. Over the following decades, he expanded his influence beyond music, trying his hand at acting and embracing new musical styles. Despite facing personal struggles, he remained a beloved figure until his passing in 1977. His impact on music and culture is undeniable. He pushed boundaries, blending genres, and challenging norms, leaving a lasting impression that continues to inspire generations. After appearing in Viva Las Vegas, he and Anne Margaret became the main acts in Las Vegas, putting on exciting shows that really grabbed the audience's attention. While filming Loving You at Paramount Studios, he chose to live at the historic Knickerbocker Hotel in Hollywood to soak in the lively atmosphere. In Jailhouse Rock, his band included the skilled duo Scotty Moore and Bill Black, who had been with him since his early days at Sun Records, playing a big role in creating his unique sound. Also, Mike Stoller showed his skill on the piano during the recording studio scenes, being a crucial part of the famous Lieber and Stoller songwriting team. All these experiences and collaborations added to his legendary status in the history of music. In a movie set in Hawaii, he played a character named Chad Gates and stayed at the Coco Palms Resort while filming. Sadly, the resort got destroyed by a hurricane in 1992 and hasn't been rebuilt since. In another movie called Tickle Me, he acted as Lonnie Beale. This movie was his fifth time working with director Norman Torok. Interestingly, in the movie Forrest Gump from 1994, he was portrayed by Peter Dobson. This shows how memorable he is in the world of entertainment. In the world of entertainment, there was someone who really made a big difference. He first appeared on NBC's The Steve Allen Plymouth Show, which got a lot of attention and led to him being invited onto Ed Sullivan's show. Even though there was a competition for viewers, they made a deal for him to perform three times. He wasn't a fan of wearing a beard for a role in Charo, and others followed his lead. In the movie Jailhouse Rock, he played a character named Vince Everett, and the movie later became known for its importance in culture. Besides his music, he also made a big impact on the big screen with his own style and personality. He didn't just influence entertainment, he became a big part of the culture, affecting how people thought and dressed in his time. With his exciting performances and timeless charm, he grabbed the attention of people all over the world, earning the nickname the King of Rock and Roll. His influence is still felt today in every song sung and every dance move made, reminding us of the incredible talent and charm of this legendary figure. In a memorable appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show, he only revealed his upper body. This happened in his third and final appearance on the show, aired on January 6, 1957. Even Michael Curtis, the director of King Creole, believed he had the potential to be a good actor. Surprisingly, from then until the late 60s, he only did two concerts and appeared on TV twice. It's interesting how he left a lasting impression with so little exposure. It shows a lot about his charm and talent, captivating audiences with just a glimpse of his abilities. His magnetic presence left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry, solidifying his status as an icon for generations to come. His personal entourage, known as the Memphis Mafia, received matching rings from him. These rings, adorned with a thunderbolt, and the letters TCB, symbolized their motto, Take Care of Business. One of these rings was placed on him when he was buried. 
In his acting career, he portrayed various roles, including Danny Fisher in King Creole and Clint Reno in Love Me Tender. Co-star Walter Matthau praised him, highlighting his intelligence, elegance, and sophistication. In King Creole, Elvis received acclaim for his instinctive acting, showcasing his bright and refined persona. In Love Me Tender, he earned an introducing credit, marking the beginning of his successful film career. Pictured on AOSA, forever commemorative postage stamp in the Music Icon series, he gained recognition beyond music. In Wild in the Country, he portrayed Glenn Tyler and recorded songs like Lonely Man and Forget Me Never, though they weren't used. Transitioning to Clambake, he took on the role of Scott Hayward. Interestingly, despite the film's Miami setting, all his scenes were filmed in Los Angeles with doubles and look-alikes standing in for him in Florida shots. Elvis Presley's versatility extended beyond music, leaving a mark on various artistic endeavors. Isn't it fascinating how someone known for their music can also be a movie star? It's like discovering hidden talents in a friend you thought you knew everything about. Take this musician, for example. He not only rocked the stage with his guitar, but also wowed audiences on the big screen. In movies like Charles and Roustabout, he showed us he could act just as well as he could sing. One of his films even got nominated for a writing award, although it lost to Mary Poppins. It's incredible how he smoothly transitioned from music to acting, proving his versatility and dedication to his craft. From entertaining us with his songs to captivating us with his performances, he left a lasting impression on both the music and film industries. His journey from a humble beginning to becoming a legend in music and movies is truly inspiring. It shows that with talent and hard work, anything is possible. In the world of entertainment, one figure stands out for his memorable performances and significant influence. He took on various roles, including that of Jess Wade in a movie where his paycheck was a staggering portion of the budget and profits. Following an unforgettable appearance on a particular episode, he gained a nickname that caused quite a stir nationwide. Backed by his talented companions, his shows left a lasting impression. In one film, however, a stunt double had to step in for him due to some controversy that initially kept him out of Mexico. Yet, these controversies were later revealed to be more about politics than personal opinions. Despite ups and downs, his mark on music and cinema remains undeniable. In the world of entertainment, some stories are so fascinating that they become legendary. Take, for instance, a certain performer whose decisions shape not just his own career, but also influence those around him. One such decision involved a movie role that eventually went to a close friend. Another intriguing aspect of this performer's life was his unexpected admiration for an unconventional impersonator. Despite facing health challenges, he managed to captivate audiences until his final tour in July 1977, earning the top spot as the most popular touring act in the U.S. for that year. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the dynamic landscape of the entertainment industry, where choices can have far-reaching consequences. It's remarkable how such seemingly small decisions can make a big difference in the grand scheme of things. In Clambake, he played Scott Hayward, showing how well he could act and entertain. During this time, he worked closely with Ray Walker from his backup group, the Jordanaires, who added his voice to make the music in the film even better. He wasn't just good at acting, he was also dedicated to making sure everything he did was really good. Moving between different roles smoothly, he then played Pacer Burton and Flaming Star, where he could show off how good he was at drama. The studio, knowing how talented he was, talked to the famous director Michael Curtis to direct the movie after Nunnally Johnson left. This was their second time working together after they did well with King Creole. They were actually going to work together again on GI Blues, showing how much they trusted each other. In Wild in the Country, he played Glenn Tyler, a character that people really connected with. Even after they finished filming, he wanted to do some scenes again to make sure everything was perfect. This showed how committed he was to doing a great job in every project. Through all the different things he did, he proved he was a really talented entertainer who could do well on the big screen and on stage. His work keeps inspiring new generations of performers and fans, showing how much of an effect he had on everyone. In the movie Blue Hawaii, he played Chad Gates effortlessly, showing how good he was at acting in different kinds of roles. He also starred with Joan Blackman in Kid Galahad, where they played love interests and had great chemistry on screen. You might remember him appearing as himself in Forrest Gump, which showed how much people still liked him, even years after he started acting. It's interesting to note that Kurt Russell did the voice for his character in the movie, but didn't get credit for it. He really looked up to actors like James Dean, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, Steve McQueen, and Marlon Brando. 
Even though Brando didn't like him personally, he still admired Brando's work a lot. Looking at his journey in movies gives us a glimpse into how good he was at acting and how much he influenced the film industry. The relationships he had, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, make his story even more interesting. It's amazing how much of an impact he had on people all around the world, and his story is definitely one worth exploring. In the realm of entertainment, a significant milestone was reached on March 5, 1955. A debut on a regional television show in Shreveport, LA marked the beginning of a notable journey for a young artist. Alongside musical achievements, struggles with chronic insomnia shaped his personal life. This challenge remained largely hidden from the public eye, contrasting with the spotlight on his musical talent. Additionally, in the world of film, a particular movie stands out as the last of its kind in his career. This black and white production showcased a different side of his abilities. These various aspects provide a glimpse into the career of a notable figure in entertainment history. In the film Blue Hawaii, he portrayed Chad Gates, who trained for the military in Fort Hood, Texas. Chad's journey mirrored his own experience when he served in the army before being stationed in Germany. Another movie, Wild in the Country, showcased him as Glenn Tyler. A song from this film, Husky Dusky Day, remained unreleased for decades until it surfaced on a record in the 1990s. Later in life, he entrusted his father Vernon Presley with the task of selecting TV evangelist Rex Humbard to oversee his funeral. It's evident that his life, both on and off screen, was marked by significant moments and decisions that shaped his legacy. In a tale spanning from the late 1950s to the late 1960s, a legendary entertainer made his mark both on screen and through iconic performances. One memorable moment unfolded during a film in 1958 where a talented actor shared kisses with a co-star, dispelling an urban legend surrounding a hesitant final scene due to illness. Another film showcased his talents, though his manager turned down a role in a famous musical, deeming it unfitting. Fast forward to 1968, a planned closing number for a special was replaced with a poignant song reflecting the era's turbulence, ultimately becoming a million-selling single and shaping the direction of future recordings. Through these snippets of history, a journey of music, film, and cultural impact unfolds. In 1961, Paradise Cove, a picturesque location featured in Blue Hawaii, became a notable tourist spot. The film, in which Elvis Presley played a role, continues to draw visitors in 2023. Moving ahead to 2002, a remixed version of one of his lesser-known tracks, A Little Less Conversation, gained popularity in dance clubs and topped the UK charts. Fast forward to 1965, and Elvis Presley took on the role of Johnny and Frankie and Johnny commencing work on the film on April 11th of that year. These snippets provide a glimpse into Elvis Presley's diverse career, from his on-screen presence in Blue Hawaii to the unexpected resurgence of a little less conversation and his role in Frankie and Johnny. In a certain movie, he danced gracefully with a wooden chair, moving smoothly around it like it was his perfect dance partner. In another film, he fought against controlling bosses with a line that really hit home, inspiring a band's name and starting a big cultural movement. And in yet another movie, he had a memorable fight scene involving a simple balsa wood chair, turning it into something powerful and interesting. His performances weren't just about the words he said, they were about the moments he made on screen, each one becoming famous in the history of movies. A chair became his partner in dance, his fight against authority inspired a band's name that would be remembered for years, and a routine scene became legendary, making him unforgettable to audiences worldwide. He made a big impression, his influence lasting through time, even causing problems for others later on as they tried to capture even a bit of his charm and talent. The mark he left behind goes beyond just acting. It shows how art can change things, and how a real icon can make a lasting impression.